Hey, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Next Level Healing. I'm very excited of the guest I have for you today. He is an amazing human being. His podcast, The Power of Your Voice, I had the honor of guesting on a few months ago, and uh, we synergized, and he's, he wanted me to be on staff at his place down in Medellin, Colombia. And he met virtually, but it turns out I have a friend who lives 20 minutes from him, so they met and hit it off. And the next thing you know, I had a plane ticket to go down there. It is gorgeous, um, and I can't wait for you guys all to learn about what he's doing down there. This is Mike Murphy. He is a successful entrepreneur, speaker, coach, and philanthropist. He is the founder of the Love from Margot Foundation, which supports women with cancer, and Mountains and Pope, a beautiful transformational retreat center in Columbia. His first book, Love Unfiltered, was a Wall Street Journal bestseller, and we are here to talk about this book that he gave me to read on the airplane back, The Creation Frequency, it blew my mind. I thought, good Lord, I didn't know this book existed. It is like the best book on law of attraction I have ever read. And it's even forwarded by Jack Canfield. So I can't wait for you to share with our listeners your story. Um, I know you were reluctant to write this book because you thought, well, there's so much out there on law of attraction. What am I bringing to the table? But honestly, I have never read um, a story that is so concise and you have an app that goes along with it. That's so beautiful. And uh, just tell us your story because it's magnificent uh, and, and so uh, to the point. Well, thank you for your kind words. And it really is a story of an experience that I had that someone taught me this back way back in 1982, I think. And so, you know, I grew up in an alcoholic home and at 14, I knew something was wrong. So I ran away. I became a habitual runaway, juvenile delinquent, um, big problem with drinking and drugs and, you you know, typical crazy kid. And then I found someone dumb enough to marry me at age 21. We had a baby at 23. And I, in typical fashion, I ran away at, after the baby was two months old. And I ended up in a 12-step program, ended up divorced. And I couldn't stay off drugs and alcohol, even though I was in these 12-step programs. You know, instead of doing daily usage, I would go, you know, two or three months and then boom, I'd go on a bender. And because I had so much emotional pain from walking out on my wife and my daughter. And a guy in a 12-step program says, hey, you know, Mike, I've never met anybody as messed up as you, but I may know somebody that can help you. And he introduced me to this guy named Doug Fitzgerald. In my first book, Love Unfiltered, I called The Mystery Man. And because I, cause I couldn't remember the name, it was so long ago. And But what he taught me was how the law of attraction really, really works and using the power of your own voice to manifest what you truly want. And I'll never forget, you know, I was so broke. I had no money. I had a $100 car. It was a Ford Pinto. I'm in Northern California in the wintertime. The door wouldn't shut because I'd been in an accident. So I got to keep the window down. I got to keep my arm out the door to keep it so I don't fall out. And so I arrive at this guy's house. It's rainy. It's wet. It's windy. I'm all disheveled. And he says, Mike, you come here one hour a week for seven weeks, and I promise you'll get everything you want in life. By the way, it's $50 an hour, which back then I didn't have 50 cents. And so I wrote him a bad check for the first session. And, and what, here's what he taught me in a nutshell. He said, number one, there's no difference between imagination and reality. Okay, what well, you can imagine, you can manifest. Number two, you have to break your life into six different areas, you know, financial, career, family, relationships. Um, health, um, and that kind of stuff. Contribution being a part of what he was teaching me as well. And so he said, what do you want most? I said, well, I want this woman that hates my guts and my daughter back in my life. And at that point, we were two years divorced. And he says, okay, let's put it on paper. I sat at his kitchen table. He gave me a white piece of paper and a pencil, and I started writing. And he was coaching me. He said, so it went something like this. Lisa and I are so happily married. Now, remember, she hates my guts, Okay. Our daughter, Michelle, thrives in this marriage. And as I'm writing this, even though I knew it was hogwash, I started to feel something like maybe maybe there's a possibility, maybe there's hope. So next week, what do you want? I want to make $10,000 a month. Next week, I want to own my own business. I want to own my own house. I want to um, run a marathon. And the week number six, he says it has this to be- This at a point when you're working in a terrible restaurant for tips and yes. giving all this guy all of your tip money to yep. give him your give him you pearls of wisdom for for an hour, but but that's a great point because that's how desperate I was. Okay, I mean 
I, I didn't have a clue what this guy was talking. Now it makes total sense. You know, you got people, I've read so many books on law of attraction. One of my favorite is uh, Joseph Murphy, uh, The Power of the Subconscious Mind. And then, of course, Dr. Joe Dispenza is teaching this and people are flocking to him to learn all this stuff. But this man was teaching me way back then. And so, and then but the magic sauce came in week seven. And he brought out a boom box. And for you youngsters out there, that's what we used to listen to music. Can I put you on pause for just a yeah. second? Because sure. there's a really juicy part where you're describing, you know, just even trying to think of these things when you were down and out. Yes. Um, so when this man taught you uh, the intention creation formula yes. and, and the steps, there's uh, eight points yep. to that. I yep. mean, that was not easy for you when you when you were sitting there working for tips, trying to get a woman back who hated your guts, uh, um, just describe to our listeners who might be suffering themselves right now, what it was like to come up with, with uh, a few sentences that, that was present tense, used positive language, emotionally powerful and authentic, which is totally important because you can't be pleasing somebody else. It has to be what's true for your heart. Yeah. In a spirit of gratitude, what you truly desire, eliminating judgment, seeing infinite possibility, and upgrading this list as you evolve. Those yep. are not simple things. They're easy. Uh, right. But they're, talk about what it was like to be so down and out and, and have this guy coach you into seeing bigger possibilities for yourself. Hey, guys. Studies are showing that 68% of people that watch podcasts regularly don't click the subscribe button. Do me a huge favor. If you like this content, click subscribe so other people know where to go for the cool stuff. Thank you. Well, I think in a certain way it helped me because, you know, this was all new to me. And for some reason, I trusted this guy and because I had I had no one else to trust. I had nowhere else to go. You know, I uh, to two years previous when when she wouldn't take me back, I'm sitting on the steps of the church we got married in and I didn't believe in God. And I said, OK, God, if you exist, and certainly you can manifest yourself into a physical being. You can sit on these steps with me and I'm, I'm broken heart and I'm destroyed and I can touch you, I can talk to you, and then I can believe in you again, I can change my life. Now, God didn't show up, but the next day, by the grace of God, I ended up in a 12-step program. So I think Doug, who was his name was Doug Fitzgerald, I think he caught this kid who was so open-minded, and I know now he was studying Silva Mind Control because I've reached out to his family and found out what he was doing. And so... I was so desperate that I just followed the simple directions, to be honest with you, you know, and, and, and what he gave me at the end, week seven, he puts in this theta brainwave music in this boom box. He hands me a relaxation script. I don't know any of this stuff, right? He hands me a microphone. He puts in a blank tape into a tape recorder. He says, okay, Mike, now read this relaxation script. And it was, took about five or six minutes and read your six intentions. And so I left there seven weeks later, 300. And this was one of the first things I've ever followed through on my whole life. And I leave there seven weeks later, $350 poor with a cassette tape. And he says, now, listen, right when you wake up each morning, you're going to cook, you're, you're in Delta and you go into theta brainwave state. I have no idea what he's talking about, but he says, listen every morning and then listen every night right before you fall asleep. And that's what I did. And in, in four months, I owned my own restaurant. My, one of my goals was to own my own business. Now, one of my goals was to make $10,000 a month. I never made that in my own restaurant. But after the restaurant, I ended up in the car business. And now I'm making $10,000 a month. And then about two years after this, the, the ex-wife calls me up out of left field and says, hey, I need a date to this uh, Christmas party. Will you take me? We got married six months later and had three more kids. So, I mean, I'm... I'll never forget this. I walk into our home. We end up buying a home with no money down. And, and I'm living this amazing life maybe 10 years later. And I, I walk into this amazing home that we have with these amazing family. And I go, my God, you know, everything that that man taught me came true. And now I start, you know, I'd already started studying this stuff from, from you know, back in the day, it was, you know, Tony Robbins and then Wayne Dyer and then Deepak Chopra and then, Eckhart Tolle and now Dr. Joe. And I mean, I mean, there's hundreds, you know, you were at Mount Zobes. I don't know if you went through my library, but you know, I became an avid reader of all this stuff because it works. And then I started, I became a um, automobile dealer in the San Francisco Bay area. So I was very successful, very wealthy. And I started teaching this to my salespeople. 
you know, and so they think, you know, they're coming there to learn to sell cars. And I would teach them how to sell cars, but I'd also teach them what I call 12 steps to success. And I would teach this law of attraction and manifestation because I know what a powerful role it played in my part. So as far as being a car dealer, I stood out. I was always different than the other car dealers because I was into this metaphysical stuff. I was into personal, you know, Tony Kanai, constant never ending improvement. So, I mean, this is how I live my life. So I think I attracted a different quality of salesperson, a different quality of employee in my dealerships. And I was very successful in the dealership business until I had another life transforming experience that we may or may not go into, but that changed everything about my heart and my soul. And that's why I created the foundation and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing in uh, South America. Fabulous. So with all the teachers of law of attraction out there and as many people who are listening to it, what do you think they're missing? Well, they, they don't understand it because everything in your physical reality started with a thought and a desire, everything, okay? I, I challenge you to look at one thing in your life, you know, that didn't start that way because this is the way this world works. Look at nature, you know, we plant a seed and we, something grows, okay? We plant a thought into the field of infinite possibilities, which Dr. Joe calls it. The Bible calls it ether. Nikola Tesla calls it plasma. The Chinese call it chi. The Indians call it pra. It's right here. And just because we can't see it, it doesn't mean it's not here. We're operating in this very small band of frequency called light, which is 1% of all frequencies. Right here, there's other frequencies. We can't see them, we can't hear them, we can't feel them. Doesn't mean they're not there. And when you understand it, Everything comes about this way. Here's what happens. People think this too, uh, Tara, that, okay, so I want to manifest a new car. And so in a couple of days, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get a new car. I see it. I believe it. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to walk out. It's going to be my driveway. No, you're going to manifest the plan to get that car into your driveway. Okay. You've got, you, it, you know, the greatest, one of the greatest books ever written is Think and Grow Rich, but I hate the title. Because you got to get off your couch and you got to go do something. You just can't think and grow rich. You got to do it my way, plant the intention into the field. The heart is 5,000 times more powerful than the thought. And this is the magnetism. We live in an electromagnetic frequency, okay? And so the electrical thought goes into the field of infinite possibilities. But the more love and gratitude I can attach to it, that's what one of the eight things you mentioned is gratitude. That draws it back. So it puts it out there and finds like-minded. So that's why the right teacher shows up, the right thought, the right idea, the right funding. It will come to you, but most people stop three feet from gold. They go, oh, okay, I tried it. I, I, had, I had a coach that I paid a lot of money to coach, and she wanted to manifest love in her life. I said, okay, we'll try it. Well, after a week or so, she goes, well, it doesn't work. I go, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, you have to stay with this stuff. And the more... Mm, the more gratitude and the more love and the more being a service to fellow humans and to God and to nature, the easier it is to attract these things. So great. I love it. So uh, this person that you were uh, advising on how to attract love, what, what instructions did you give her? So to do the darn thing, right? The intention of what you want. Now, let me, let me talk about that for a second too. Because I coach people. I say, listen, <clears throat> you want to be as specific as possible? Nothing wrong with that, but you got to be flexible, okay? You might say, hey, I want to manifest a, a guy with blonde hair, okay, with these care qualities and blah, blah, blah. But you're co-creating with the creator of all, which I call God. And so you have to understand there might be something bigger and better. Take Mountains of Hope, for example. I started manifesting that, you know, seven, eight years ago, maybe 10 years ago, and it keeps evolving because I'm flexible. I know what the intention of the outcome I want for the guest but it keeps getting bigger and better because I'm open to that, you know? And so we have to understand that we're co-creating with the creator of all. And so be specific, but be flexible. Because ultimately we're looking for the feeling that that thing gives us. So, so when you're putting gratitude out, as Dr. Joe says, gratitude is the ultimate signature of receivership. What a great saying that is. Uh -huh. uh, but if you're if you're feeling the feeling of, of, I don't know, having that car or being in that relationship and giving thanks for that, um, I imagine that's key to this process. A act as if. Act as if you and then you guess what happens. OK, so now I act as if I have this great healing center in Medellin, Colombia, 
and I start vibrating that frequency, people like you show up into my life. <laughs> Other people show up into my life, right? People that are blessing the work because because I've 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 already I've already manifested it. Okay, it might not be full at the moment, but it's happening. Okay. And so as I vibrate at that frequency, I attract other people vibrating at that frequency. And the highest frequency is love. And behind that is compassion and gratitude and service. You know, and I'll be honest with you. It was just recently where I said, okay, enough is enough. I gave up every, every negative thing in my life I got rid of, okay? I remember I, had to, I told one guy, you know, I, I had some health issues and I had parasites in my body and was really affecting my heart. And this one negative guy was in my life. I said, listen, dude, I got parasites in my body. I don't need them outside my body. I love you, but I'm blocking you. <laughs> Adios, okay? And that's what we have to do. We have to be I tough. agree with you. And I <laughs> coach people the same way. If, if you have people that are dragging you down, you need new people in your life. I don't care who they are. It, it, that you can love it, your family from a distance. Yeah. But if they're, if they're shooting bullets at you, dragging you down, you know, punching holes God. in your dreams, then bye. <laughs> gotta go, gotta go. And you know, and that's called tough love, right? And that's called loving yourself. Yes. Okay. So I had to really learn, listen, you know, when, when my late wife Margot passed away, I mean, I was as broken hearted as anybody could ever be. And it, it was probably the best thing that ever happened. It was the best thing that ever happened to me because, you know, this beautiful woman, she said to me, a thousand times, Mike, you got to learn to be vulnerable. You got to learn to be vulnerable. I didn't know what the heck she was talking about until the day she died. And then I was so vulnerable that God was able to come into my life, fillet open my heart, take out all the arrogance, all the BS, all the self-centeredness and replace it with love. But, but there I was in this brokenhearted state of love and service, but my feet were nowhere near the ground. So that's the other dangerous thing. We got to stay grounded and open our heart. You know, so many people today live here, and I call this the, in, the insane asylum, the committee of psychopaths, okay? And what happens is, you know, w this is our true essence. From here, I can lie to you, I can cheat you, I can manipulate you, I can steal from you, I can do a million things, right? From here, I can't. This is my soul, this is my heart, this is my essence. From here, I can only love and, and be compassionate. So when I was living here, it's an insane asylum, okay? When I move here, now I can use this supercomputer to manifest the life of my dreams. But we got we got to take this 18-inch journey. I'll give you an example. My father had a very tough childhood. He never knew love, and it was tough to be his son, right? And, and, and I had a beautiful, loving, saint-like mother. And so I had this bipolar parents, right? And so, but in the last hour of my dad's life was just a couple of years ago at 87 years old. I was able to sit in the last hour of his life alone, just me and him. It just worked out perfectly. And I just started pouring my love into this man's heart. I didn't know if he was alive or, you know, his barely, his eyes were closed, barely breathing. And, I, and all of a sudden, about 30 minutes of just telling him how much I love him, what a great father is, what a great person, the, the right eye, the one closest to me, open and tears just started flowing. So you listen, you're going to make this journey from here to here eventually. Don't do it in the last hour of your life. Life is too rich. It hurts to live from here. I'll be honest with you because feelings can hurt. Okay, this doesn't hurt. This is, a, this is everywhere. But when you live here, yeah, you, you're going to feel, but that's okay. It's okay to feel sadness. It's okay to feel uh, people's suffering. It's okay to feel your own suffering. It won't kill you. This will drive you nuts. You know, and my, one of my favorite teachers in the world today is Byron Katie. And she says the only thing anybody can ever be found guilty of is believing a thought that's not true. So get out of here and just live from here. I'm almost speechless by what you just said. Um, there's so much in what you just said. Uh, the 18 inch journey being the longest, but most important journey any of us will ever make. Um, I'm a huge Zach Bush fan and uh, he's got his eight minutes that is a mind blowing video. Uh, he revived three people in a weekend, all with very different backgrounds. And they all said the same thing. Why did you bring me back? <laughs> yeah. Because, and, and so many people that I've interviewed who have had near-death experiences, um, I've, gosh, probably had eight of them recently, 
Um, but there's just this amazing, immense acceptance and love and light that they see when they cross over. Um, oh. And uh, and and what you just said is so important, and it's his message too. Why do we wait right. until then to experience this? Why don't we create this here on Earth? Yeah. And yes, it can be painful, but there's no other way to live. You know, uh, Tara, I work a lot with cancer patients, and that's what our foundation does. And almost to, and, and started with my wife, but most of them, almost 100%, I mean, I'm sure there's an exception or two, but I can't recall any. They said can they were grateful for the cancer because it woke them up. Well, so you just said the most re- amazing thing ever. I know how much you loved Margot. I mean, you've written books on it. Right, I mean, right. this was your nearest and dearest. Right. And you just got through saying that it may have been the best thing that ever happened to you yeah. because it opened your heart. Yes. Wow. Amen. Amen. That's enormous. Yeah. And it's changed my whole life. It's changed my whole destiny. You know, it's, it's funny because I was uh, fortunate once to, I ran into Dr. Bruce Lipton, biology of belief, epigenetics, right? I love the guy. <laughs> love him guy too. That. Yep. And, and we're sitting there at lunch and I say, you know, Bruce, I got to tell you, I could care less whether I'm in body or out of body. Okay. And I really meant this. This was like eight or nine years ago. He said, yeah, I get you, Mike, but let me ask you one question. Can you taste chocolate when you're out of body? And so I've embraced <laughs> that, you know, I'm, I'm still here in <laughs> for reason, okay? So, so I can make love, I can eat chocolate, I can, I can enjoy this physicalness, which when we, we're in duality, right? So there's a price to pay to be in physical, you have to deal with this duality. And I always say this, you know, the, the really, one of the big problems we have is we're, we're, in, we're in an animal body. We urinate, we fornicate, we defecate, but we're spirit and soul and navigating these two things. And then in duality, you can't have good without evil. So we got to understand that. But it's just which one do you want to play in? You want to play in the good or you want to play in the evil? And well, so that's what we got to figure out here. But once we do, life takes on a whole nother meaning. And if you read books like Journey of the Souls... Uh, oh my God. We... Yeah, we came here to have this opportunity to experience 3D and grow in that experience. So, can I, and, can I touch on that for a second? Yeah, you please. Brought up Journey of Souls and Destiny of Souls, uh, Michael Newton, right? So, you got you to gotta get this, folks. So, on December 1st, 2010, the oncologist said to my wife, Margot, Unfortunately, the cancer spread to the lining of your brain. If you do nothing, you have six weeks to live. And if you treat it, you have six months to live. Now, we never had a discussion. We left that office and off to MD Anderson we went, okay? This woman fought, a young woman, much younger than me, she fought every single day for another day of life because she loved life so much. I mean, brain surgeries twice, draining her lungs twice full of liquids, torture, and and but every day, Every day she fought for another day of life, and I'm so grateful that she did. But every night we listened to those two books on tape, and she prepared to take that last breath. And then we were blessed to have this amazing guy come to our into our life the last week and teach her how to let go. Have everybody come and say goodbye while she's still alive. Have everybody come and say goodbye after she's passed. So profound. The healing was so profound. And when she took that last breath, I promise you, nobody was more at peace, more in love, and more ready to go. That makes me want to cry right now. I'm because crying was- here. I just had chills go my entire back. Yeah. But I'm glad you brought up those books. Did you and I already talk about those books? or just... uh, No, we didn't, but okay. um, we are uh, kind of on the same wavelength. <laughs> there you go. Oh, oh goodness. Uh, <laughs> wow, that's so powerful. Wow. Yeah, it's such a, a privilege and an opportunity to be here, and um, and we should make the most of it. Yes. Amen. So if you were to go back and talk to the 10-year-old Michael Murphy, what would you say to him? i say, dude, you know, forget all the nonsense, Okay. You're, you, you, I will say this to everybody right now. You're a powerful creator. You're not a victim, okay? You came here to create something. You came here to do something. I, I hate it when they tell me, hey, Mike, you chose to be here at this time. I go, I think they made a mistake. But the truth is, we chose to be here at this time. You and me and everybody watching this and listening. But we get so damn lost because we're born to these dysfunctional parents that no one ever taught them how to be parents, that have all their own programming, all their own issues, okay? So it takes so many years to undo, I'm still undoing childhood programming 
I could show you right now a Polaroid of me in 1957. I'm seven, eight, nine months old. I got a cigarette hanging out of my mouth. I got a bottle of beer between my legs. And on the Polaroid, my mother had written the caption, learning young, just like mommy and daddy. So oh. I was programmed to drink, smoke, womanize, and gamble. And I became very, very good. I'm still unraveling some of that. I still <laughs> love betting on a football game. I still have like having a beer and a shot once in a while. I mean, so, so we have to understand we're programmed until we're not. And, but now we got to, it's like peeling an onion, peeling an onion. You were in Mountains of Hope. You saw the labyrinth. I've written a powerful walking meditation. And while you're walking into that 12th century labyrinth, into the dead center, the void, I'm teaching you to let go of all that programming. So when you get to the center, you're in nothing. You know, Dr. Joe talks about being in nothing, right? And now as you walk out of that labyrinth, I want you to program your, the rest of your life from your heart. What you want, not what your parents want, not what TV tells you to want, not what your siblings or teachers told you want. What do you desire? And let's go get it because you're a powerful creator. And when we look at the quantum physics version of Boom. nothing, it is rich with <laughs> everything. It's everything. <laughs> and that's, that's what's so exciting. And what's so exciting, guys like Dr. Joe, proving this scientifically yes, right now. Yes, I love that. What, 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 what Lipton did with the biology of belief and that, that the consciousness is in the outside of the cell, not in the mitochondria. The mitochondria is just the energy. In the, he calls it the gonads. But the consciousness is in the cell. And we're made up of 50 trillion individual conscious living cells that, that hear everything you hear, feel everything you feel, hear everything you say, especially your self-talk. That's why we got to be very, very careful with language. You know, the mystery man, he had me speak, speak. You know, the Bible says God spoke this world into existence, the power of sound. And what is this crap that comes out of our mouth sometimes? You know, me included, okay? We have to be very mindful of what we're speaking, what we're thinking and our inner dialogue because it affects everything. I love to say we have 2 million cells coming online every second. There you go. What do you want them hearing? What what do you want their marching orders to be? You yes. know, something horrible that I have to go through today or do you want it to be, wow, are we excited to be here and look yeah. at all that we've manifested in our life? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not that I have to wake up tomorrow. I get to wake up tomorrow. It's not that I have to work out. I get to work out. It's not that I have to go to work. I get to go to work. Did we just? It's just small little changes in our language changes everything. And I routinely have people, you know, echo back and you know how what's a more powerful way to say that? And they put it in the more powerful language. And I love to put because I can at the end. You know, I you get go. to wake up in the morning because I can. Because yes. like you said, when your wife is fighting for every single last oh, day, there's look, people that I, can't get out of bed, and yes. there's people who don't have legs to walk, and there's people that don't have healthy lungs to breathe. Um, yep. So we, you know, just mounting up those things that we're grateful and when, for. And we have something stupid piss us off and lose control, you know? Yeah. And I'm as guilty as anybody else, but I'm getting a heck of a lot better every single day. And I also am a huge Byron Katie fan, so oh, um, I, love I, I know she's influenced your life. Do you want to say anything about how she's influenced your well, life? Well, I just want to say I was I was fortunate, you know, four months, <laughs> imagine this, four months after my wife had died, I go to a two-week Byron Katie school to work, right? And you know how no, it goes. No, no. So, it so, was after my, your wife died. Yeah, and my one-liner was, "My wife died." Is it true? Can you absolutely know it's true? What do you believe? What do you think? How do you act? Blah blah blah. And so I did that for two weeks. And so after that experience, I wanted to write a book with that was love unfiltered. And and so I, I I wanted to honor her, so I went to her and said, "Hey, is it okay if I talk about my experience?" And she said, "Yes." And so then I got to know her a little behind the scenes. And I had a very dramatic uh, moment with my son and her where my son went to one of her things. And I got to see that this woman is so pure, so real. And, and you know, and after my wife had died, what I did for three weeks, three months before I went to that, I would walk around my neighborhood with my earbuds in and listening to her um, uh, thousand, thousand names for joy. And my God, I mean, this woman, but she's real. And Dr. Joe is real. You know, he got me, he got me at one of his uh, things for a week. And he said this one statement, you'll never see a VIP in one of my rooms. You know, you go to some of these things, this guy paid this, this guy paid that. I'm like, I'm going to uh, the biohacking thing right now. I paid full price. And every other week, there's a 50% off. You know, I'm going, whoa. You know, it's like, so Dr. Joe and then Bruce. I mean, those, they're pure. You know, I'm looking for pure teachers 
that that are that are, have great information and and just blessing the world. If you had a megaphone and the whole world was listening, what would you say? You're a powerful creator, and we need you. And and forget all this BS you've been taught. And de deprogram and reprogram from your heart. And and the world needs us right now. You know, for those that are awake and and understand what we're talking about right now. Gosh darn, you know, so much suffering going on in the world. One thing I love about Katie, she said, is she go, you know, she's 80 years old right now. Why am I still doing this? And she says, as long as one person believes the thought they're suffering, I still have work to do. And I so admire that. I love her. I've read every book of hers. Um, I love what her husband does and the Diamond yeah. Sutra that he yes. um teaches and um love it love it love it yeah um so uh where can people find you find out more about you uh, tell them about your podcast um how do you want people to stay in touch with you and learn from you more so my personal website is mike murphy unfiltered and go there um the podcast is the power of your voice podcast it's wherever you know i, I mean I'm, does anybody not have a podcast <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. it's such an efficient way to reach people well, and and thank god I, there's not advertisers paying for it because then the advertisers dictate what's on the show well and you you know i i'm not in america very much and i've been here for the last two nights and so um I, I fall into watching tv holy moly i mean come on you know so now i know i don't watch tv but but so so the podcast of power your voice. But really, my big project is is mountainsofhope.com, and and we are creating something there that is so amazing and so beautiful. And you know, it came out of you know for four or five years, I would give financial grants to women below the poverty line while they're battling cancer. Most of them African American women in Oakland. That believe me, they have very little emotional support. I'd meet these women. And the model was I'd give them a thousand a month for five months, thinking that, you know, they didn't have money to begin with. Now they have this terrible diagnosis and now their expenses have gone up and they can't work. So I would fill the void. It worked maybe twice where someone would go through treatment, get healed and go back to work. Most of the time they get sicker, sicker, sicker and unfortunately die. And I could tell you stories that would blow your mind of what I saw. And then the other group of women I did were where I am today in La Quinta, California, near Palm Springs, was illegal Mexican women that come here to clean our hotel rooms, work on our golf courses, and and pick our produce. And they're they're exposed to 151 known chemicals that cause cancer. And the stories, I mean, it's just mind-boggling. So I said, okay, this isn't working. I'm going through a lot of money. I can't afford to do it anymore. I'm going broke. So then I go, I'm going to buy water purifiers and juicing machines and vegetables and teach them how to strengthen their immune system. Well, that was like putting a Band-Aid on a mortal wound. So that's why I created Mountains of Hope. And the theory is that, you know, we charge wealthy people as much as we can, and then we give scholarships to these women, and especially like, a, like Margo, for example, 29-year-old woman, just will light up a room, just a heart of gold, you know, and believe and for, for people that are listening, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that that breast cancer was all emotional trauma, okay? And so we have to really, that's what we do at Mountains of Hope. You know, we're going to detox all the crap out of your body, which there's tons of it. I mean, the, the air is dirty. The water is dirty. The, we don't use real food. Come on. We're full of toxicity. You're doing a dry fast right now, so you get it. So so, so we're going to get rid of that toxicity, and, we're, and we grow 50 different vegetables right on property. So we're, we're giving you this life force nutrition. Now we're getting into sprouts because they're 10 times more powerful. So you, we're going to get this stuff and teach you how to continue to do it while you go home, give you great nutrition while you're there. But more importantly, we're going to work on mental rewiring these neural pathways that aren't serving you any longer and install new programming. And more importantly, we're going to get in and deal with this emotional trauma. So Mountains of Hope is my life and my project right now. I'm committed 100% just recently, maybe in the last four months. I said, okay, enough is enough. I'm giving my life entirely to God. I'm giving this project entirely to God, and I'm letting go. And God Almighty, the people that have shown up, just this, you know, you met Marcella. She's been an angel for me. We just hired a brand new chef that's world-class bilingual, which is very beneficial for me. We just hired a new hotel manager. We just hired a new um, doctor, a new nurse. So, I mean, what we do there is so profound. We had a woman um, named Ray came there. And Ray was a rock star uh, advertising executive, New York, Dallas, San Francisco. 
And she went down to clean up the World Trade Center after 9-11. Yeah. And she was exposed to so much toxicity. She'd been sick ever since. She came there for two weeks. She said, Mike, I've healed 50%. I knew this would happen because of all the, the biohacking stuff you have there, everything you do there. I'm healed 50%. We had an 86-year-old guy show up with like 400 blood sugar. We, after two days, it's under 100. I think he's still doing well because he drinks his green juice every day. Listen, we all have, and this is what I love about Dr. Joe, inside of us, we all have the ability to heal ourselves. But we got to understand it's physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And when we address all four of those, we can have major breakthroughs. Absolutely. On that uh, note of the mental being so powerful, uh, our conscious mind, which is only 5 to 10% of our brain, only processes 40 bits of information per second. Yep. That huge subconscious part of our brain, which is like you were talking, you know, all that family yep. trauma that we experience early on in life, or any trauma. I mean, being born is traumatic. <laughs> yeah. But that's processing 40 million bits of information per second. So if the subconscious mind wants to go in one direction and your conscious mind wants to go in the yep. other direction, who's going to win that? You know. <laughs> you know, you know the answer. And that's what I love about your work. And that's why I resonated with. So, and that's why we did a session together and both of those issues that I with, what was that like three or four weeks ago, right? Both Very of those sure. issues have now been resolved. Okay. Because the conscious mind shined light on the subconscious line uh, mind. Right. So that's all it is. It's just waking up, paying attention. You know, it's really just being conscious and aware, which only happens in the present moment. I'm now I am totally speechless. <laughs> Mike, I am so grateful to have you on the show today here. Uh, you know, you have uh, brought light to so many issues in, in such a short amount of time. Uh, it, it, tell us just a few more people that have influenced you along the way, because uh, I know we've already touched on several. Why? Well, you know, it started with Tony Robbins and the firewalk and all that. Tony's touched so many people's lives. I mean, he's a rock star of that. But I invited I Tony Robbins to speak to my class at UCLA during the 80s, and he did. Yeah, I'm sure he did. <laughs> he's got a big heart. You know, he's got a big heart, a big mission. But then I started getting into, you know, Wayne Dyer, God rest his soul, you know, uh, was a great, great teacher. I, I read all of his books, I, all 40 of them. And, of course, Deepak and him were in bed together there for a while. Eckhart Tolle, I had to read that book seven times, Understand and Consciousness. Um, but now really it's Dr. in Bruce Lipton, Biology of Belief, Byron Katie, Joe Dispenza, um, and just people like you. I mean, now is now is anybody that's awake today, you know, is 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 a blessing to be around, you know, and to share this. And you, you said know? something so critical there that you read the book numerous times. It's crazy how often simple the rules are, but it takes so many years. Like my meditation teacher sometimes would tell me things. And, you know, it would take me 10 years to understand what he was saying. I'm trying to think who else. I mean, you know, I will say this. Uh, the book, the, the Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy, written in the 30s and 40s. You know, and now you can go back to Norman Vincent Peale and people like that. You know, I mean, there's great. This is not new. OK, this is this is in the Bible and books before the Bible. So it, this is just the way this world works. Once we believe it and we can use it, then we can become empowered. And and so much what I love about your book um, is that, I mean, yeah, I, I, it's stuff I already knew, but the way you explained it and the way you told your story and the simplicity with which you did yeah. it made such a difference. Um, no. Can you talk about the app? Uh, are yeah. people using that? You. Yeah. Every, you know how I know they're using it? Because Apple and Google, who I can't stand, every time they make a change, my app goes down and a million people want to go, hey, where's my app? You know, <laughs> I, that app cost me a bloody fortune. I don't even charge for it. But here's the power of the app. It, so we, we encourage you, with, there's a relaxation script in there, but we encourage you to do it in your own voice. And so now you're getting into that theta brainwave state, right? And that's where the magic happens, theta and alpha. Okay, alpha is creative and theta is for manifestation. And so now in your own voice, there's magic here. In your own voice, you're reprogramming that subconscious mind, okay? Now, it has to be real. So, for example, I'm 66 years old. If I want to play quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers, ain't going to happen, right? So we have to make sure it can pierce the conscious, get into the subconscious. So that's super important, okay? But now I'm reprogramming the subconscious mind. As we mentioned before, those 50 trillion cells are hearing everything, feeling everything. But here's the magic. That sound, that intention is going into the field of infinite possibilities and meeting like-minded thoughts and feelings, right? 
And so, so that's the magic. And then the heart draws it back. And this is, that's where, you know, I never would have said that prior to Dr. Joe, probably, you know, I would have said, Hey, you're just reprogramming your subconscious mind. You're using the reticular activating system. You're getting focused on what you really want. You're not getting distracted for those few minutes. You're listening every morning, every night. But now the woo woo part of this is no longer woo woo. I mean, it's the way it works. And so it's just getting people to understand that. And we got to get out of our negative thinking. We got to open our minds. So many people have their mind closed. You know, I have four kids, eight grandkids. So I understand what the world is like. Okay. I see these generations and I see all this, right? But once you get this, you can create miracles in your life. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, so people should record in their own voice. Yeah. those sections and then put yeah. it on the app because you so, have so, a way that so, it right. joins so first first thing you do is you write the break your life into six seven eight areas whatever you want okay and say you know let's say for example uh, I'm, I'm i'm unhappy in my job and i want a new job okay just write, man i love my new job i love how it makes me feel i love the money i'm making i love how i'm able to serve people even if it's not real, okay? It's going to be real if you can believe it, okay? So make it real and start vibrating in that frequency. And then now by recording, I'm listening every morning, okay? Opportunities will start showing up. This, you know, serendipity, synchronicity, that's a real thing, folks. When you're vibrating this frequency, I'm, I'm at this point right now, it's so weird, is I have a thought and, and, and like, for example, the other day I had a thought to turn off a light, these lights were flickering. I was doing this meditation, this Dr. Joe body electric meditation and, and mouths open. These two lights are flickering, right? And when I, when I wake up, they're still flickering when I come back to reality and I have the thought I'm going to turn them off and they quit flickering. I mean, when you get like this, um, um, Wayne Dyer used to talk about, it, he'd be playing tennis and time would slow down. You know, there's so many things that start happening when you really get into the zone. The zone is real too, but you have to believe in it. And then you have to just be free and committed to whatever you're trying to do. So by recording these intentions and being flexible, be specific as possible, but be flexible. Watch what starts to show up. See who starts to call. See what book falls off a shelf. There's so many stories of this. You've heard them as much as me. You know how people just all of a sudden, boom, because I had this intention, boom, that book showed up. That person showed up. That funding showed up. You know and it's what's real. what's so exciting is the more you tune into this, the more it shows up. I mean, just coming down to your place, and I mean, cool. there were so many crazy Look synchronicities that happened yes. down there. Yes. And I mean, it's just beyond, you know, it, there's, there's no chance there. It just... It's so beyond chance. And and thank God, you know, I've interviewed people like Mark Gober, who proves that scientifically, uh, just looks at all the data on all this testing and studies that's been done over time with all this metaphysical stuff. It's not yeah. really metaphysical. It is it is just physical that we don't haven't understood up until now. It's just the way it works, but they've, they've taught us to believe in such nonsense, okay? And there's so much, oh my God. I mean, I feel sorry for people that have been watching the news the last two days that I've been in the States and don't realize that it's all just a show. It's all just one big distraction. Well, they got us looking at UCLA and Columbia. How many people came across the border? I mean, you know, I look at all of reality, but now I look at it in context, okay? Because the work I'm doing is forever. This, it's real, it's forever. This is just a show and a distraction. Let them play their games, okay? I don't play in that world anymore. I'm playing in this spiritual world of love and service to humanity. And like Katie, to those that are, believe they're suffering, I want to I want to help eliminate that. Mike, I'm so delighted to have you on the show today. Thank you so much, uh, folks. Uh, if you loved this, which I know you did, please uh, click subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode of Next Level Healing. <laughs>